Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, our source for figure and model updates Wednesdays and Fridays. So today, after another long hiatus, I'm back at the YouTube thing. I don't know if anybody's still watching these. Uh, this is my Gorilla from Industria Mechanica. It's a 135th scale kit, and I am doing a small diorama. The tie-in to High Caliber Miniatures, I don't sell Industria Mechanica, unfortunately, but I do sell the figures and some of the accessories that I'm putting into the diorama, so that's my tie-in, that's my... That's basically why you're seeing a video about this. So I wanted to do a quick update about the kit itself and where we're at. So let's start with the body. So this is very much a work in progress. The natural resin color is this gray. Everything else is various states of primer. And all the roughness is going to get smoothed down, obviously. This is immediately after assembling, putting the final articulate points into their final stages. I needed to wait until I had the base basically mocked up and together before I could make this asymmetric stance to it. And I knew I wanted the gorilla to not be standing flat. Like I wanted to show off some of the really cool stuff you can do with the fully articulate components, but it's like he's all set now. This is kit number 22 out of 50 for the first edition. So if you've ever built a limited edition or small run, I should say, resin kit, you know that there's some skill, shall we say, that goes into it. Maybe less skill, more patience and uh, technique that you have to put into it. Uh, that being said, these industry mechanica things, man, they go together so well. Uh, every time I go to a show with the Rook or the Knight, People always, one thing that they always gripe at me about, uh, as if I don't know, <laughs> is uh, is the price tag that's on these things. Um, and I, I am aware that they cost more than the average mecha kit, but you're getting a lot for it. And they're, they're so unique. Like the night, you know, I don't, I don't really look at much on my cabinet of completed works, but I still do take the night out from time to time and have a look at them because... I mean, the lines, the design, the way that the kit went together, they're just so cool. And you really do get that with these kits. The Industry Mechanica stuff, I've got nothing but praise for it, really. So, yeah. Now, talking back about these armor plates here, this is perfect for unit markings, kill markings, uh, for lack of a better term, nose art, even though I know this isn't a nose section. But I'm just thinking back to things like the old PC game Mech Warrior 2. I don't know if any of you have the same fond memories that I do about that, but they always had really cool like numbers, uh, unit markings, things like that on them. And that's the kind of thing I'm gonna try and replicate on this. And I am thinking about, for camouflage schemes, I've got a bunch of paint plates for ME109, you know, the second world war interceptor basically, and they had a lot of really funky, really cool two-tone patterns where there was like a squiggle, light on the bottom, uh, dark on the top, and I'm, I'm going to work around that. I'm, this isn't going to be a 109 with legs, but I'm going to work with that, and then I was thinking about having one of these ceramic plates be sort of uh, fresh out of the factory and be in its original primer color, and then have like chalk markings on it for like... Uh, widths and various measurements to sort of set it apart and that'd be a little bit of character that I could put into it but we'll see I, I still haven't nailed down the, the paint scheme yet so the other sub assembly that I've got here is the the sort of the the head I guess you could call it of the gorilla and just like the the main superstructure this went together really really well bit of cleanup but that's to be expected so, the other part of this video that I wanted to touch on was the base, and let's move on to that. So we're back with the base. Now, this is just a rough mock-up. None of these components are fixed down. The only things that are fixed in place are the sidewalls here. Now, the green stuff is basically what you use to plant, artificial plants. You get it at Michael's, you can get it at art supply stores, probably at gardening stores, I don't know. But it's really great because you can shear it down into any shape you want. There's not really any barrier to that. And you can get it in very large bricks. So, you know, you can make hills, uh, buildings out of it probably. But 
The only thing I would caution against it is you have to have a plan to fix it in place. You can't leave it exposed because um, it flakes off real easy. So I'm going to fix it in place with thin down white glue or carpenter glue, whatever I can find that thins well with water. And then I'm going to apply some roughage over top of that to make it so it's not a smooth surface. And then over top of that, we're going to start layering in our components just so that there's a, a base that looks irregular underneath that won't be flaking off over time. The white strips that are forming the frame, for lack of a better word, of the base are exactly what you think they are. It's evergreen strip. This is what real modelers use. I have yet to use it, so, uh, you know, be gentle. Um, I still haven't ground down all the side edges here to make them flush with the green stuff. But it basically worked exactly how you think it works. I took a, a pen drew the outline on the evergreen, sliced it down. I'm gonna grind it back down so it's all uniform, sort of refine these corners here that are butt joints. And then we're gonna go from there, basically. Now, these components here that are around the gorilla, oh, let's get you out of there. The components are, as some of you may have guessed, from a King Tiger. Now, this is the DML Smart Kit and I decided that instead of trying to hawk this at some IPMS show, after I got the Meng King Tiger, I was going to take all the really cool stuff from the Smart Kit, the Magic Tracks, the metal barrels, some of the metal fittings and stuff that I was going to, <laughs> like a real modeler, go out and buy replacements for. I decided to be smart for once and just keep those, cannibalize the rest of the kit, and I think it's going to look really cool. I've still got a lot of chopping I need to do to obfuscate the fact that this is... A King Tiger. I want it to look like randomized sort of machine components. But as you can see, the Gorilla does actually fit in the mock-up. Uh, this isn't just fanciful. And down here, there's going to be a barrier. This basically delineates the barrier. The Nuts Planet Guard Heavy Gunner is behind it. And then out in front is a Stalingrad 135th scale, they call them Apocalypse Survivors. He looks basically like he's a, a vagrant that has his hands up. And so the gorilla is going to be turning down to look at him. So there's going to be multiple layers. You've got the top of the gorilla is going to be here. The figure is going to be down here. And that will create some interest. So yeah, this is where I'm at with the gorilla. I sort of blitzed this yesterday and really just jump-started the project again. Sometimes I find it's really, really hard when you shelve a project for too long to get back into it. But, I mean, for whatever reason, I cleared my bench and I just got down to it. So, yeah, I am very excited about how this is going. I've got a huge stockpile now of components. This is the first time that I've actually ever scrapped a kit. It's so brutally. And uh, I am very excited to create different geometric shapes. Uh, the great thing about these is that they've got all these sort of, you know, extra details on the shapes themselves. So it's just like doing, uh, I mean, you're basically creating your landscape. Oh yeah. And what this may, you may be wondering what this actually is. This is just supposed to be like a slag heap that the gorilla is protecting. And I'm going to have a bunch of graffiti on the barricade. I still haven't nailed down what the color scheme is going to be for the components. I'm thinking a, a rust that's covered in dust with rain streaking on it. Basically, I just want it to look uniformly uh, bad and sort of randomized. So that'll be a really fun step to do. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm planning on doing more of these videos. I've got a bunch already created. And yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, High Caliber Miniatures. I'll see you guys next time.